Wondering what the top five cybersecurity threats for 2021 are? Concerned about how they're going to affect you? Well, I'm going to tell you all about them and tell you what you can do to get out of the way. All that and more coming up now. Hello, everybody. I'm Adam Gordon, an entertainer here at IT Pro TV, and I'm coming at you with the top five cybersecurity threats in 2021. Number one is going to be a really important one, and it's so obvious. Most people don't even think about it. It's us, all the humans. We are the problem. And what I mean by that specifically is that the majority of breaches that are affecting organizations, regardless of size, are actually being driven through social engineering and human interaction. Specifically, the idea is that because we individually and collectively are really just not taking cybersecurity seriously enough, we're not focused on mitigating the risks and the threats and, of course, the weaknesses, the vulnerabilities that exist in ourselves, in the humans. We're not training enough. We're not teaching enough. We're not security aware enough to understand the things that we need to do, those best practices, those just general generic cybersecurity 101 kind of activities, because we're not all doing them, doing them consistently and doing them correctly the bad guys are winning. The best thing we can do is take a step back and really reimagine and rethink the approaches that we individually and collectively have around security awareness and cybersecurity is gonna then become so much better in our organizations because if we can get everybody to understand how to really see something, say something, think about what they can do to impact the overall security of the organization in a more positive way by just simply, honestly, not doing silly things and not doing things that can lead to compromise, we're all gonna be more secure. IDC projects that the cloud global services market is gonna reach a one trillion, that's one trillion with a T, dollar value in the next several years around 2024, which means we're putting a whole bunch of stuff in the cloud and we're paying a whole bunch of money in order to use the cloud. Now that's good as an opportunity, but of course with all that investment and all that use comes the unfortunate side effect, which is if we're not paying attention to all the security issues we have to make sure we're doing the right way, we introduce the likelihood that some, if not a lot of that data is potentially gonna be available to bad actors and could be compromised. The rapid move, the race to the cloud through lifting and shifting infrastructure, and of course the data that lives on it into the cloud is opening up a whole new set of dynamic security threats and a new threat landscape that all of us, all of you, as business owners, IT professionals, security practitioners, have to really be hyper-focused on. Things to watch out for would include misconfiguration of cloud storage, we put a bunch of stuff somewhere, and we don't focus on confidentiality to ensure data is protected so that bad actors can't get access to it. Encryption would be valuable for that. We don't focus on integrity, ensuring data is not changed or modified without knowledge and consent of the owner. Well, integrity mechanisms that are gonna protect our data and tell us if it changes would be valuable. Hashing is a good example of that. And if we don't focus on availability, business continuity and disaster recovery planning, Multi-zone and multi-data center and multi-geography hosting is possible and indeed enabling as a technology in the cloud, but we have to understand how to do it correctly and also take into account the legal and regulatory ramifications of having data in a cloud and being able to move it almost on demand with the push of a button and where we put it is really a focus for us because we have to make sure that where we store data is where we want it to be regulated and where it moves is gonna be okay from a regulation perspective. With regards to reduce visibility and control, there's a shared responsibility model in the cloud. We as the customer are putting things there and controlling aspects of how they live, how they operate, how they're accessed, and of course, over their life cycle, how we manage them. But we share that responsibility with the cloud service provider. Think the Amazons, Microsofts, and Googles of the cloud world. And if we're both not doing the things we need to do, and or we're not doing them in concert with one another, well, of course, there's gonna be gaps and bad things can happen. Incomplete data deletion is a concern. We put a bunch of stuff in the cloud, it lives there over time, and when we're ready to leave, if we don't take everything with us, we don't make sure we don't leave anything behind, as a result, 
One or more things could be left that are not supposed to be seen. And if they're not protected properly, and we don't dispose of them properly, it's likely that somebody may find them and put them to a use that we're really not comfortable with and we weren't planning on. And of course, finally, vulnerable cloud apps are a concern. How are our applications that are web enabled and living in the cloud up to the task of ensuring security across the data lifecycle while data is in storage at rest, while data is in transit on the wire being sent back and forth, and of course, while it's in use on one or more endpoints. If development of cloud applications is not following proper and best practices from the perspective of cloud security guidance for development, well, we're gonna have gaps in our security and as a result, our data may leak out. We have to be on guard all the time to ensure these things don't happen. Now you may be out there wondering, well, Adam, why don't you put this at the top of the list? It's so important, it's so impactful, it's happening so much. It seems like it should really be the number one thing. Well, the reality is it is certainly happening. It's happening a lot. It's been happening for some time and it is on the rise, but there's a specific targeting idea that bad actors are really going after here that's causing this rise. We call this big game hunting or BGH, going after really big companies that can afford to pay large high profile ransoms, but there's a two stage process here. And this is why ransomware can become so problematic. You get ransomware infections essentially through malware delivery, right? Somebody in your organization is probably targeted. Somebody may click on an email link, somehow download a file, seemingly innocently and infects their system and that propagates out into the rest of the organization, opening one or more attack vectors, backdoors, avenues where bad actors can come in. And what they do is before they ransom the systems and lock them out, they steal a bunch of data. They may live in your system for months undetected, probing, looking, doing reconnaissance, trying to understand where the really big things that are valuable are. Once they find them, they steal them from you. They make copies of all that, they take it away, they have it securely outside your systems, and then they flip on the ransomware, encrypting all of your information, locking you out, and forcing the company essentially to stop operating while they make a very critical and very problematic choice. Do we pay the ransom, allowing us to, in theory, get our operational capabilities back by unlocking our data, or do we try to go it alone? Do we say, Bad actors, we're not gonna play your game. We're gonna fix our systems ourselves and you can go try to ransom somebody else. Well, that's of course an individual company decision. But big game hunting is really the reason that ransomware is on the rise and the reason why so many big companies seem to be in the news all the time getting targeted and successfully attacked. Because they have a lot of money and the bad actors think, well, they're probably gonna pay because they're not gonna take the time and trouble to try to fix this. They just wanna make the problem go away. So they're gonna pay us. So the ransomware guys and girls are actually correct. A lot of times companies do pay. But what happens is they wanna pay twice. They pay to unlock the systems and then they have to pay again when the bad actors come back and say, hey, by the way, remember all this cool stuff we stole from you? You don't even know we have all your data? We're about to spread it all over the internet and tell everybody all your secrets unless you pay us more money. And this is a really big issue right now because companies are getting hit not once, but twice for the same reason. And in addition to big game hunting, the other big trend with ransomware is the lack of preparation, the lack of business continuity disaster recovery planning so that companies are backing up their data and have secure copies that are verified, validated, and that can be used to restore these systems and tell the bad actors, hey, guess what? We're not playing your game. Go find somebody else. We're just gonna restore our data. A little bit of downtime, a little bit of financial loss involved with being offline to do that, negligible by comparison to having to pay the really big ransoms that these bad actors are demanding. Ransomware is a thing, but the reality is if we're just better at being proactive and smart about applying best practices, we can actually prevent ourselves and our companies from falling prey to this particular attack. More and more, Companies are extending the partnership arrangements they have to do business into other businesses, into other areas, and across multiple verticals, not just with regards to sourcing and insourcing the initial right components to make things, 
but actually bringing in services and entire lines of business as managed capabilities that are being used to further their ability to service their customers. And because of these extended supply lines, we're seeing a very big problem emerge. That problem is that we as an organization have our act together from a security and a risk management and threat mitigation standpoint. We do all the right things. We've got it all down, we document it, we audit it, we comply, we're good. But the problem is we're now trusting a lot of other people to be good as good at the same level consistently as we are. If they're not operating the same way that we are, if they're not doing the same things we are, and they're not doing them the same way, well, of course, that's really going to unfortunately end badly for us because we put our trust in something, someone, some entity, that's clearly just not up to the task. Now, this has a lot of reasons why this may occur. Maybe they're in a different country and there are different laws and regulations and requirements. Maybe they don't have to operate at the same level in order to be compliant, and so they just don't. Maybe we as an organization haven't done a really good job of communicating to them what our requirements and expectations are, and we haven't done a good job of partnering to hold them accountable and understand that we are the ones that have to drive that conversation to make them operate in alignment with our business requirement. Most of you listening to me probably work for companies where this is a thought process, even if you don't realize it, that has taken hold and is getting in the way of you being more secure. And if you can tackle this one, you're gonna go a long way to solving a lot of the other issues and concerns. All those other ones, the other four on this list, are really stemming ultimately from this one. Number five is mistaking compliance for protection. And you may hear me say that and go, well, hold on a second, wait a second, Adam. We don't mistake compliance for protection. Those two things are not the same. We know that, they're not related, and we know that they're not exactly gonna equal one another. Well, that may be true, but I promise you, many companies actually think that simply because they're compliant, that compliance equals we are protected. And unfortunately, those two things are not related and they're not the same thing. Compliance is showing alignment with a regulation, a statute, a requirement of some kind, typically through some sort of auditability, verification and validation solution that proves, according to whatever the standard or regulation is, that you're doing one or more things to bring your company, and of course anything focused on by that regulation or that standard, to the appropriate level, and you can document and consistently show that you're doing that. Protection is not an automatic outcome of compliance. You can be compliant and be totally unprotected, or you could be compliant and as a result of compliance, achieve a level of protection that may or may not be adequate for the organization. What we have to do as business owners, as IT professionals, as security practitioners, is remind the decision makers in our organizations whether they're ourselves or not, that we can and indeed are compliant, but we need to figure out how to be protected as part of compliance. And when we focus on those two things as separate but equal actions, and of course, separate but equal measurable outcomes, and we define them distinctly, individually, and then allow them to become dependent to work together towards ensuring our security, we have a much stronger solution than just checking off our compliance box, getting our audit findings, showing our vendors, our customers, our stakeholders that we passed the compliance test and claiming we're protected, which unfortunately, is what a lot of companies do. Don't be that company because you wanna make sure that you're compliant, but you also wanna take steps to ensure you're protected. All right, everybody, that's our top five cybersecurity threat list for 2021. I brought it to you, but I don't just talk to you about this kind of stuff on YouTube. Over at IT Pro TV, you can watch me and all of the entertainers I work with help you to understand all sorts of complex technology, all of your certification needs, and of course, training across all sorts of different technologies. We do it all, we bring it to you in a way that's gonna be engaging and exciting, and I encourage you to come over, check us out, and spend some more time with me over there. But for now, I'm gonna say goodbye, and I'll see you soon.